Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about historical romances because Historical Romance Readathon is coming up really soon. It's happening in December and if you haven't watched my announcement video yet, that's where you can find all the details so be sure to watch it. Today I've got some historical romance winter slash holiday recommendations for you guys for the readathon. There are so many winter themed historical romances but surprisingly I haven't read too many of them which means I haven't read all the books that I'll be talking about today but I have read some of them. I just don't really read like winter slash holiday specific historical romances that much but that's gonna change for this readathon. I'm really excited for it. I found a bunch that all sound so good that hopefully you guys can enjoy. So for this historical romance recommendations list I've picked out one book for each of the squares in the bingo board that we have for the readathon. It's a 4x4 four four square so there's 16 squares but I am leaving out two of them because they're kind of more for you to pick rather than for me to pick for you. I'm gonna leave out recommendations for the new to you author square and the book you already own square since that's for you to decide but I will have 14 other historical romances that are all winter or holiday themed plus I'll be sharing my TBR for the readathon. Going in order of the bingo board the first square is a book with a green or red cover and the book I have for this is Once Upon a Duke by Erica Ridley. It's got a red cover. It's a second chance romance between a duke and the woman he left behind. He's now back in his hometown that I think is called Christmas, like the actual town is called Christmas, and of course he reunites with the woman that he loved. It's short, it's a novella around 200 pages, and plus it is free on Amazon right now. For the Grace Burroughs Square, if you don't want to read our group read, which is Lady Sophie's Christmas Wish, or if you read it already or you just want to read another Grace Burroughs book, she actually has a ton of holiday winter historical romances. This one is Lady Louisa's Christmas Night with a heroine who is the daughter of a duke but in her spare time her side job is to write racy poems. There's a fortune hunter who wants to reveal the secret of hers, who wants to ruin her reputation while they're at a holiday ball but then the hero swoops in, he comes in to save the day by offering the heroine a marriage of convenience. For a book that takes place during winter, I mean all the books that I'll be talking about do take place during winter but I'm choosing Julia Quinn. She actually has two novellas that take place during the winter. You can read The Lady Most Willing or The Further Observations of Lady Whistledown. You can read the entire anthology or just Julia Quinn's novella. I only read Julia Quinn's novella and I enjoy both of them. In The Lady Most Willing, the entire anthology is about these four women who kind of get kidnapped by this Scottish uncle because he wants to match make them with his two nephews. And the other Julia Quinn novella in the Lady Whistledown novella is about a heroine who gets jilted by her kind of fiance. She thought she was gonna marry him but then he married someone else and she ends up falling for his brother instead. I remember this one was really cute like there's this whole ice skating scene it was just so perfectly wintry. For the Marriage in Trouble square there's An Affair Before Christmas by Eloisa James. This is book two in the Desperate Duchesses series which I haven't read yet but I think you can read all of them as standalones. Of course it's got the marriage and trouble trope between a duke and a duchess. They were super in love when they first got married but it's been a couple years and that love, that fire between them has kind of sizzled out. So they've lost that spark now and the duke is very determined to win it back with his wife. For a 2021 release I have another anthology, another historical romance winter themed anthology. There are quite a few of them out there but this one is Mistletoe Christmas. It's got Eloisa James, Christy Caldwell, Janet McGregor and Erica Ridley. The only one that I haven't read from yet is Jana McGregor but hers sounds really good. There's two second chance romances that sound really good here. Christy Caldwell's novella is about a heroine who reunites with her former fiance. She broke it off with him a decade ago but now they reunite at this Christmas party. The whole anthology is about this Duke's Christmas party and the Jana McGregor novella is a marriage in trouble romance so you could also definitely use that novella for the marriage in trouble box too. For a non-titled hero I have A Kiss for Midwinter by Courtney Milan. This is book 1.5 in the Brother Sinister series. The non-titled hero here is a doctor. Neither of the main characters are from any sort of titled family. He's actually been in love with the heroine for quite a while but unfortunately she hates him but this winter he is going to win her heart. For a book that's part of a series I have The Promise and a Kiss by Stephanie Lawrence. This is part of her very popular 
Sinister series. I read book one and I loved it. This is book 0.5. It's about the parents of the Duke hero from book one, I believe. But it was written a couple years after Devil's Bride and if you have the paperback, this is what the step back looks like. The main characters met seven Christmases ago at a convent where the heroine was. The hero kind of fell at her feet after climbing out of a window and she ends up saving him by telling the sisters that she hasn't seen a man around. He kisses her, of course, but they don't see each other for seven years. And then seven years later, it's winter again, it's Christmas. They reunite at a ball. She sees her Duke hero again. And from the blurb, it says, one look and he's determined to reclaim her. For a book with a clinch cover or any book with a couple that's embracing on the cover, I have Lord Dashwood Missed Out by Tessa Dare. This one is an adorable novella in the Spindle Co series. I read it as a standalone and it was perfectly fine. It's a great novella if you love the snowed in or forced proximity tropes. So here the heroine was in love with the boy next door. They were kind of supposed to get together but then he ended up leaving her without a word. Because of this she writes a paper kind of shit talking him and she becomes an instant bestseller. In present day she's on her way to speak at Spindle Co but then there's an accident and she ends up reunited with the boy next door who is not happy with her. They're both snowed in in this carriage and they need to hash things out. For a book that's not set in Europe, I'm recommending a novella in the How the Duke Stole Christmas anthology. This anthology has some amazing authors. It's got Sarah McLean, Tessa Dare, Joanna Shoup, and Sophie Jordan. And the one novella that's not set in Europe is the one by Joanna Shoup. She loves to write her Gilded Age romances, so it's set in New York City. This anthology was actually how I was first introduced to Joanna Shoup, and it was so, so good. I really liked it. We have a heroine who is a writer. She's a columnist who is famous for her recipes and advice, even though she doesn't know how to cook. The hero is the newspaper's owner. He's not actually a duke like the rest of these stories, but his name is Duke. He asked the heroine to plan this party, to host this party, because it seems like something that's right up her alley. So she panics because she has no idea how to host a party, let alone something big for the holidays. But it was really fun, really sweet. It was definitely one of my favorites in this anthology. For a book with a rogue in the title, I have another Grace Burroughs romance. It's A Rogue in Winter. It's a novella, a part of the Rogues to Riches series. I haven't read it yet, but this one sounds good. The heroine is on her way to find a titled man to offer her marriage so that she can save her family from financial ruin. But there's a snowstorm and of course she gets stuck at the hero's vicarage. So the hero is a vicar, he's a non-titled hero, and I think this is a pretty recent release. It came out in 2021. For a wallflower heroine, there's another Tessa Dare novella, Once Upon a Winter's Eve. It's also part of the Spindle Cove series. The heroine is this smart wallflower. She speaks and understands a bunch of different languages, so she's the only one who can understand the hero who's speaking a foreign language when he falls at her feet during a Christmas ball. For the Marriage of Convenience Square, of course I have to recommend the most iconic winter Marriage of Convenience romance. It's Devil in Winter by Lisa Kleypas. This is the ultimate winter historical romance with the classic Marriage of Convenience. It's book three in the Wallflower series, but reads totally fine as a standalone. It was the first book that I read from Lisa Kleypas. We've got another shy Wallflower heroine here and the biggest rake, the most rakish rake hero. And if you haven't seen, this is the wintry step back. There's a recommended to you square and I'm just gonna use this one as like a bonus recommendation. There's no, no trope to this one. It's Once Upon a Christmas Eve by Elizabeth Hoyt, which is part of her Maiden Lane series. I think this might be the final story in the series. It's a novella, but should read fine as a standalone. It's got enemies to lovers with a Viscount hero who hates Christmas and a heroine who hates rakes like the hero. So he and his grandmother are forced to stay with a heroine because of a snowstorm. So if you love forest proximity, this one is also a good one to try. The last square is for a lady heroine and I have the Viscount's Tempting Minx by Erica Ridley. The heroine here is of course a lady. She is a type A heroine who is very micromanaging and organized. She's nearing 30 so she's considered a spinster and she decides that at this annual ball this winter she's finally gonna snag herself a husband. The hero is the one who hosts this annual ball but because of this freak accident it gets cancelled. The heroine's like no that's not gonna stop me from helping you plan this ball, plan another ball. It's the first book in the Dukes of War series. It's another novella and plus the Kindle version 
is currently free. And now for my TBR for the readathon, I'm definitely going to be reading a couple that I've already talked about, but I have A Wallflower Christmas by Lisa Kleypas. This is the one book that I haven't read in the Wallflower series. It's book 4.5. It's a novella. Here is what the step back looks like, but the hero here is Daisy and Lillian's brother. He's an American with a wild reputation, but now he needs to learn the rules of London society in order to win himself a bride. I'm also going to read another Lisa Kleypas book because why not? It's I Will, which is another Christmas novella. It was part of the Wishlist anthology, but I'm probably just going to read this novella. The hero here was disinherited, and in order to prove to his father that he's changed, he enters a fake engagement with the heroine. I am definitely planning to read Jennifer Ashley, A Mackenzie Clan Christmas, which has two novellas. It's got A Mackenzie Yuletide and A Mackenzie Clan Christmas. Of course, it's about the four original Mackenzies, the four brothers that I love. All their families are spending the holidays together in Scotland. And I'm also planning on reading our group read Lady Sophie's Christmas Wish by Grace Burroughs. It's going to be my first time reading Grace Burroughs, so I'm excited. The heroine here gets trapped during a snowstorm with the hero and this abandoned baby. They fall in love, but they don't tell each other the truth of who they are. Like she is the daughter of a duke and he is an heir to a viscount. And the last three books that are on my TV are for the readathon. I've got A Kiss for Midwinter by Courtney Milan, which is the novella in the Brother Sinister series, A Rogue in Winter by Grace Burroughs, and Mistletoe Christmas. I'm not sure that I'm going to read the entire anthology. I might just read the two Second Chance Romances because those sound the best to me. I don't normally read entire anthologies anyway, but we'll see. But that's it for this video. That's it for all the winter and holiday themed historical romances. If you have your own recommendations, please feel free to share them. I might even end up changing up my TBR, but I'm excited for the readathon. We're only a short few weeks away from it, so hopefully you guys can join. And a big shout out to Boksu for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't heard of them, Boksu is a premium Japanese snack box subscription, and each box is filled with authentic Japanese snacks. Boksu makes a perfect and memorable gift for anyone in your life who appreciates Japanese snacks and culture, especially during a time where people aren't able to travel as much. And not only would you be giving gifting them Boksu, which is already really great, but you would also be gifting them the chance to win free tickets to Japan because Boksu is having a giveaway. They'll be picking out one lucky winner to win a free set of tickets and anyone who is subscribed before December 31st is automatically entered. Want free tickets to Japan? Use my code LACY10 and the link in my description to become eligible to win the giveaway by subscribing to Boksu. My code will get you 10% off your subscription. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity available for anyone who subscribes until December 31st. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Bye!